about it. So welcome to our session of FIST, Flow in Sports Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're gonna have a special guest by the name of Coach Steve Alexandre. Can you just confirm that you can see my screen? Yes. yes. We can see it. Beautiful. So just take a look at his uh, welcome speech when he was playing for the Ottawa GGs, so the university. So let's take a look and let's take a listen. Steve, I imagine you would like to say a few words. Call the babysitters, you're not going home yet. <clears throat> All right, good evening, everyone. GGs, family, friends, alumni association, distinguished guests. It is an honor to me, for me, to be here in front of you today to accept this recognition. You know they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I'm a product of that. I grew up without a father. I saw my mom struggle two times, but yet she was strong. So between my mom, my Tante Marie, my grandmother, I want you to notice that he was uh, starting to choke up a little bit, okay? He was starting to get a little bit emotional. And I want you to remember that emotions are good if you can harness it, if you can use your emotions to your advantage. So sometimes, you know, you might want to blow up. You might want to get upset. You might want to slam a door. You might want to hit your hand against the wall. But you take a few moments and you turn always a negative into a positive. Positive. Negative? Positive. Negative? Positive. Pessimism. Optimism. Remember, pessimism is to see the glass half empty. Optimism is to see the glass half full. Okay? So. I couldn't help but pause that for a moment and I want you guys to share and to appreciate what just happened there. Really savor this session because honestly, it's a very special one for me. I've worked with uh, Coach Steve for uh, several years, many years ago, and there's a lot to learn from this person. Foster Holmes and my sister right here, who's my hero. I've had different women touch me and con contribute to my well-being. I got into sports because of my cousin Harry and my uncle Napoleon. And I'll always be forever grateful to, for them, to them because sports kept me off the streets in Montreal. In football, I found teammates, coaches, mentors, father figures, people I can look up to. So you're watching this, but you're perhaps getting a question ready that you can ask Coach Steve later on. So when I'll say, um, you know, is there any questions, what I'll ask you to do is uh, start typing your questions as you hear him in the live version. Or if you have a question that's spur of the moment, you can start writing your questions now in, your, in the chat feature to shape myself up to the man I would become. I fed off certain individuals, learned from them. My former coach at Vieux Montréal, Marc Santerre, used to teach us about paying attention to details. My best friend, Wendy Menard, showed me how it is to be loyal, as he's always been there for me, till you see him today. Maxime Dufault showed me how to pick the right people to, to surround yourself with as he became my brother and same 
as the 113 Goldburn Avenue crew. Michel Dupree showed me how to be relentless, overcoming the obstacles he had to do, he had. He had. Mars showed me how to be a go-getter, to believe in what you do. Denis showed me how to have a regiment, to be disciplined, to work hard for what you want. And Mike White, what's to say about Mike White? Mike White would show us about having a plan, sticking to it, working at it to make it happen, getting better every day. But the one thing I do remember from him is so at the end of the day, always make your mama proud. You know, in football, we get injuries. So, honestly, thank you to Doc Greenberg and his crew and the medical staff to make sure, making, making sure that I can go on the field week after week and dance the way I like to dance on the field. Thanks to Mac Charles. So, notice how, in a little bit, it's more of a, like an art figure. I'm here today. And Work is like art. You know, when I, when I assign homework in my class, I don't call it homework. I call it home fun. Obrio for showing me that this place was a place for me. To all the rest of my teammates, coaches, staff, for my four years here, I say merci. To Mark Preslav, Luke Shaver, Phil Cote, Pat Parody, Ali Ajram, Fran Jacques, and the rest of my 2000 teammates. So notice there's going to be history. You're naming names because you're building a history. Everyone who around you who's helping you get to where you want to become. There's a good support network. Uh, I appreciate Dante who writes, what a powerful speech. And I certainly like to keep questions and comments in the uh, comment section relevant. So I like that very much. Good stuff, Dante. Thank you for making me a champion. Thank you for making that we can wear this ring today and forever. I am proud and still proud to represent young black men in Montreal. Proud to represent Saint Laurent football where I started, where it all started for me. Proud to represent les Spartiates du Cégep du Vieux Montréal. But most of all, I'm proud to represent my family. Isabelle, merci beaucoup de toujours avoir été là pour moi depuis qu'on était tout petit, même quand tu donnais des claques, c'est correct. So that in French, um, thank you, you know, even to people who, uh, family members who hit, hit him. Okay, now, in some ways he's joking, but in some ways you can make the association with your teacher who you may or may not like, you know, who your coach you may or may not like because they're too hard on you. Everybody is trying to push you in the same direction. However, they have different ways to do it. Some people are tougher. Some people are easier. Some people do it a certain way. That's a good way. Some people do it a certain way. That's a bad way. That's their way. You have to interpret it and say, okay, what do they want from me? They want me to work. They want me to, they want me to stay more disciplined. Okay. It, there's no games. You want to get to where you want to get to. And if you want to be the best of the best, do you have any ideas how much work it takes? Do you have any ideas the discipline that is needed? You must work, work, and work. Toujours été là pour moi. Tilad. My yes, my number one fan, mon oncle Steve a toujours voulu te rendre fier. J'espère qu'aujourd'hui encore je te rends fier. And the last one from this family, my family, I want to thank is my little brother Clotaire. Stand up, Clotaire. If you, if you want to know 
The big reason why I came to Ottawa U is because of this young man. My little brother, who today is an actor, successful actor, dancer, uh, he's a showman in show business, okay, has always been the same way, even in the classroom, which created problems. My mother had no control on him. So she said, when she says to me, when you leave for university, what's gonna happen with him? The only person that has control on him is you. And I said, you know what? I'll stay in Canada. I'll stay either Montreal or go somewhere where I can bring him. Because of course, at the time, I was aspiring to have a, a scholarship and go play in the States and everything. I put all of that aside to make sure I can bring this kid with me to wherever I went to school to make sure he would finish school. If you want to know one of the most successful attributes, in other words, one of the, the successful ingredients of being successful, the answer lies in two things. It's called In the Wheel of Excellence, a great article that I love to always start off with one of my sports psychology sessions with um, my level three thinking, okay? Uh, you know that levels uh, of thinking range from one to six. And in the level three thinking, I always start off with the wheel of excellence and in there lies belief and commitment. That is the ingredient. So when I say in the heart of the wheel, it's the most important. Without belief and commitment, there is zero chance for you to take it to the next level. Belief in yourself, belief in your teammates, belief in the system, to trust the system. A commitment takes hours. If ever you Google, what does it take to become an expert? Google it. What does it take to become an expert? You're going to see Google's definition says 10,000 hours of doing the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, but yeah, I did it. Do it again. Yeah, but I did it. Do it again. 10,000 hours. Then you'll become an expert. And if you think about it, do the math. Imagine eight hours a day. We'll give you a day off six days a week. How long will that take you to become an expert? It often takes years. Think of it like, forget about sports for a few seconds, an instrument that you play. We looked at skateboarding. Uh, Tristan was showing off his, uh, his room or his workspace. It is a commitment to take your game, to take your performance to the next level. Belief and commitment. So, so Clotel, for you being a brat, <laughs> je te dis merci, mon frère, parce que tu as fait en sorte que j'ai fait le bon choix de venir à l'Université d'Ottawa. Merci. <laughs> to my kids, and I'll hear this now, Antoine, my oldest. Antoine is named after my grandfather, Antoine Louis. And my second child, Kaizen. Uh, all right? To Antoine and Kaizen, I say get better every day. Simple as that. Surround yourself with people that are going to help you rise. and Get better every day. Listen to a lot of these things. Now, what I suggest for you, because uh, unfortunately, hey, Coach Doran, don't be negative. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff goes in one ear and out the other. And so you grab a sports psychology binder that I talked about, survival guide working with Coach Doron. Grab your, grab your binder, okay? Mine's over here, okay? You can see it? Yes. So I grab my binder, okay? And inside my binder, I've got different, different topics, okay? Motivation, confidence, self-talk, routines, optimism, team building, 
uh, attitude, mental toughness, flow, okay? So right now we're in a section of mental toughness. And you can just write interview with Steve Alexander. When I say you can just write, I like to give you a choice. And then I'd like to see who actually does it. Because in my opinion, when you do it yourself, that's the best thing. That's the most meaningful way to get things done. Not when I tell you to do it, when you do it on your own. Yeah, but I have no pen, I have no paper. You get, you get yourself prepared. Come in with a pencil, a pen, and a piece of paper, write it down. You write it down so it sticks in your brain. In my opinion, the most powerful organism, powerful body parts, it's the brain. We're working on the brain. Get better every day. Write that down. Get better every day. Two most important parts of my athletic career, commitment and excellence. The two most important parts of my athletic career, commitment and excellence. Commitment and belief, excuse me. You don't wanna write all that? Just write two words, belief and commitment. The more, you, the more that you work, the better it is. The more invested you are into this, the better it is. The more responsibilities you have, the better it is. Trust me. Severe. And surround yourself with people who are going to put a smile on your face. To my love, Tess, my partner in life, thank you for understanding my passion for education, youth, and sport, as you also share the same ones as me, except for football, she likes basketball. <laughs> Thank you, University of Ottawa, for providing me with an education. Thank you, Gigi's family, to making sure I had an experience of a lifetime, and I sure did. God, I wish my mom was here. I wish she was here. Whitey, where are you? Coach, I made my mother proud, and I'm making her proud again today. This induction to me is the greatest sports accomplishment of my life. It is. I want to thank my people from Montreal. I came down for me, my former teammates, former uh, um, enemies on the field, all right? Um, I came here to support. It was a shocking surprise for me that they would be here, all right? Thank you so much. They, they, they value what I do. I do what I do because I'm in fun. I'm having fun with kids every day. I'm having fun, you know, guiding them. It's just, it's just, it's just I'm, I'm in the best of both worlds working with education and sports. Um, Mommy, ton fils qui en 98 est venu à l'Université d'Ottawa, mais 20 ans plus tard, il revient ici et il rentre au Temple Renommé. My name is Steve Alexandre, and I'm now a proud Hall of Famer of the Ottawa GGs football program. This GG, nice, garnet, and gray blood will always run through my veins. Trust me on that. Thank you all again, and have a good rest of the evening. Thank you. So, what do you guys think of that one? It was inspirational. Very emotional. Emotional. Nice. I like even, you know, a word that you can say and everyone's just saying a word or so. That's great. Makes you want to do better. Nice. Nice. Makes you want to do better. It's Inspirational. Inspiring. Anything else uh, that comes to mind? 
He inspires you to complete your dream. Nice. Uh, don't ask me that. Does he inspire you? You know, he inspires me to, co to, to pursue my dream. Don't ask me that. Tell me that. He, finish my sentence, say it again. Inspires me to complete my dream. Good. One's with an exclamation mark and the other one is with a question mark. Which one's better? Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. When you're, when you're gonna do something, okay? If you're gonna open a door, <clears throat> you might as well break it down. And don't go and start breaking down doors. But if you know what I mean, don't just open the door, break it. You know, don't just do something half-ass. If you're gonna do something, do it well. Get it? Got it. Got it. Got it. Good. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, um, the next thing I want to show you is what it takes to become a, um, you know, what it's like to be in the you know, in the realm of being a football player. Okay. So I'd like you to take a look at, uh, at this video in a few seconds here. Hold on. <clears throat> You can see the video? Yes. 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 So what it's like to play for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The date was Saturday, October 27th, 2012. The final time Hamilton's beloved Tiger Cats would Whoops. at Iberwind State. It rained, fittingly. The gray skies painting the picture for such a somber day in Steeltown. Many thought Hamilton would lose its home field advantage when those concrete and chain link homes of Iber Wind were. Let's see the video. For the shiny new Tim Hortons field. Place. But they didn't lose the home field advantage. No, in fact, the Thai Cats just don't lose. Not at home. Hyrule, whose kick is up. It is home. Sweet home for the Cats. And now the road to the Grey Cup will run through Hamilton, as it probably should. In Hamilton, football means more. Hard statement to quantify, also unassailable fact. The community rallies around the team. The team is in the community. Thus, it makes sense they are an entirely different team at home. Because in Hamilton, it's not just about the 12 men that take the field. It's about Pigskin Pete and the Box J Boys. It's about the face painters and the noisemakers. At Westtown Bar and Grill, the nightly debate is if the local team can beat the best from the West. At the stadium, VIP parking spots are on the lawns of friendly neighbors who, for a nominal fee, will let you pull up beside their flower bed. The next best spots are at nearby schools and churches who use those fees to fund their programs. You see, this team is not just an entertainment option. It is a vessel that helps the community thrive. In Hamilton, fans favor the jerseys of local stars, past or present. You can't tell they haven't had a great cup to celebrate since 1999 because they still party like it's 1999. The fans are nuts. <laughs> they are. And I mean that in a good way. The fans here are nuts. The stadium sits in Ward 3. That's the east end of the city, historically populated with steelworkers. That hard-nosed, steel-town mentality permeates through the stands and on the field and its players. Tackles are cheered louder than first downs. And this team is steel tough. Tone set by the defense, led by an undersized but dominant defender who once donned the black and gold. A backup QB throwing dimes to a receiver no bigger than those fans cheering in the stands. 
they are by definition underdogs. Home field advantage? The league's smallest market may have the biggest home field advantage. The Tiger Cats are the true pride of Hamilton, which is why they are nearly impossible to beat them, and why they hope they'll hoist the cup in Hamilton before they host the cup in Hamilton. 1999 was indeed one hell of a party, but 20 years later, Hamilton is anxious and ready to party once again. They're just waiting for the guest of honor. Okay, speaking of the guest of honor, looks like we have a guest of honor that is in the house. So we're going to take a few moments to welcome Coach Steve Alexandre. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay. Uh, I have to say that uh, I've been doing this for a little while now, and uh, you came in in the nick of time, and I was starting to get a little bit nervous. I've only sent him uh, three or four messages just to make sure, and every time he's like, yes, yes, sure, sure. But, uh, uh, you know, reliable as ever. Oh, if, I, if, I, if I say yes, yes, count me in. I'm in. I'm all in. So today's theme is uh, has to do with resilience. Okay, yeah. it has to do with um, uh, coming back from adversity. Okay, so uh, before we get started, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Ruji say a few words. Good evening, everyone. So uh, glad to be here again tonight for the second in our uh, series of. Uh, athlete interviews for our spotted students. I'm happy to see all of our students are here tonight and uh, participating. Um, I want to say five words that uh, to me represent Coach Steve. First word, integrity. Second word, passion. Third word, inspiration. Fourth word, resilience. And the fifth word, coach. Coach Steve. I've known Coach Steve for a little more than 10 years, 15 years, I believe now. We're at about 15 years, Coach 16, Steve and I. 16 years. 16 years. And uh, boys and girls, uh, Coach Steve represents those five words that I just said. Integrity, passion, resilience, inspiration, and coach. You're about to learn from one of the greats, one who represents each of those values that I've just mentioned to you. Listen carefully to the words, the ideas, the advice that you will receive from Coach Steve tonight. Thank you, Coach, for being here, and uh, let's have some fun tonight. All right. So, so if I can just uh, take it, take the baton from uh, from Mr. Ruji and perhaps uh, just backtrack to when uh, Coach Steve and I met was uh, about that time, about 16 years ago. We were coaching at Laval Liberty Academy, and as you see, my retro shirt. Okay, I brought that in there. And so, perhaps what you can do is uh, just describe your role back then. What, what were you doing there and, uh, and perhaps uh, how you got that started? <clears throat> well, um, uh, first of all, good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to be here, like I said before. It's, um, I, I work now, uh, it's been 10 years, I work with CJEB students. So my students now are anywhere between 17 and 22. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to see younger faces at the screen here. Uh, it's nice to see no mustaches, no beards, and uh, just uh, just some some boys eager to uh, get something going in life. All right, so you guys are part of Spartan too. That's very good. Um, and I see that Monsieur Le is there. So th this means that you guys are are well taken care of. Uh, you guys are well uh, surrounded, for sure. And uh, knowing Mr. Ruji, he's someone I'll make sure that you guys are surrounded by the best people available out there. To, to make sure you reach uh, whichever goals you want to reach. Uh, <clears throat> I first started at Souvenir Elementary School 
That's what I came in at the, into the board. And I thought two years at Souvenir. And, uh, and then in 2005, um, there was a position open at uh, Laval Liberty High School. Uh, and I went and I uh, uh, applied for the position and I got the position. And at the time, um, I found out that it was a there was a football program at the time uh, at Laval Liberty, but I was not uh, coaching yet. Uh, I was coaching at the college level. I had just finished playing professional football and uh, I, I had started coaching at a college level at, at the CJEP level. Um, so to me, uh, my level of coaching was for this category. And then I had the chance to meet with Mr. Ruji, uh, who showed me around the school. Uh, we talked a lot. Uh, we talked sports, of course. And then when Mr. Ruji found out that I was a former um, football player, uh, he asked me you know, if I could uh, maybe help the team. So I went and looked at the practice, looked at, uh, looked at the boys, practice and girls. We have a few girls. We had a few girls back then on the football team. And then uh, I looked at them. I said, let me do this. I'd like, to, I'd like to help. And then I went on and helped. And I said to myself, and I remember going back to, um, to, my, to my wife at the time, um, saying to say, um, well, I think I'm going to be helping the team maybe once a week, you know? And then once a week became twice a week. And then twice a week became three times a week. And then all of a sudden, all my afternoons were, were, uh, were with, the, with the Vipers, with the Panthers, and I was just having fun um, to be uh, around uh, younger students, of course, because like I said, I was used to CJEP students, um, just eager, just, they just wanted to get better. And they got better every day. Every day we taught them something new. Every day we practiced different things. Um, or older things, you know, we, we just practiced it. Everybody got better. And that spring, the Vipers had won the, uh, the championship on that, that spring. And, and this is when I fell in love with Laval Liberty and Laval Junior. And uh, this, is, this is, to me, it was, I did not see myself not coaching there. So, so therefore- I interrupt you when you say uh, Laval Junior. So now, uh, sorry, uh, Laval Liberty and Laval- uh, yeah, sorry. But now, obviously, with the name changes, so the junior side is Laval Junior Academy and the okay. senior side is Laval Senior Academy. All right. Thank you. Okay. So at the time, like I said, I just fell in love with the program. I just fell in love with the, with the students that were part of the program. Uh, uh, and even till this day, I consider them my friends. They would come to my house for barbecues and we, you know, we, we hang out like friends. Uh, we watch football together on Sundays. Watch, we meet up for Super Bowl. And the, 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 same, the same group of guys um, that I coached who uh, were actually at, uh, in, in, in uh, Laval Junior uh, at the time are guys that I consider today my friends, um, which, is, which is very special. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> when I coached at Laval Liberty, um, when um, at one point, um, the other coach, the coach I was there at, uh, before, before me had left. And then Mr. Ruji asked me if I wanted to position the position and I gladly accepted the position as a, as a head coach to, to, to run the program, to run the teams, no problem. And then um, we had some, some fantastic years. We had some uh, super, uh, phenomenal season. Uh, we won the ball door. Um, we had a group, a great group of, uh, of, of guys and girls, of course, sorry, okay, on the team. Um, and we, uh, the, the, our, the way we did things went, kind of went fast. It didn't go fast because uh, we, it went fast, but we still, we took care of details, okay? We took care of details in a sense, in a sense that we made sure that the team was prepared to do this, okay? the way the program was structured with the sports concentration, the way the practices were structured, the people that we brought in. And of course, with the players, the students that we had, uh, we had to make sure that we got them uh, prepared the right way. And like I said before, uh, this group of, of students were just sponges. They just wanted to learn every day and they applied themselves, they worked hard. Um, and this is what you know kind of made the success 
of Lavalerie Panthers football uh, at, at the time. Um, I, have, I had some, some great years at, the, at Laval Liberty. Uh, until this day, I must say, they're my best years of coaching. Once you get up and, you know, at a higher level, there's a lot more pressure um, to win, of course. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then it's a different, of course, it, it is a different environment. It's fun, of course, but it is a different environment. But I must say that like, in my, 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 my best years of coaching of having- So I'm gonna have to second that in the sense that uh, they were great years. I remember them uh, quite vividly uh, in a sense, winning 11, in, 11 games in a row, being 11 and 0, coming back from uh, 40 point plus deficits. I know we spoke over the phone a couple of days ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being in the locker room being down over 40 points and you telling the team, is there anywhere else that you'd rather be than being right here? And yeah. I don't know where you come up with these speeches. Uh, where do you come up with these well, speeches? Actually, as a coach, um, a lot of times people have asked me, we, you have asked me this question, you know, where do you come up? When I come into the locker room and I look into their eyes, I look at their body language, they dictate what I'm going to be telling them. I don't think about what am I, what am I going to tell them once we get back uh, in the locker room at halftime. I get there at halftime, I, I meet with my, they sit down, I meet with the coaches, let's see what, what are we going to do now in terms of game planning? What are we changing? What are we modifying? What are we, what are we adding, taking, taking out? Mm -hmm. And then I will go back, I will go back to them on, in the locker room, look at them for about 15 seconds. And just by looking at them, I would know what to tell. I would know what to tell. So I remember, you know, part of the preparation was doing workshops in the auditorium. Um, and obviously the, the training, as you're saying, it, it became seven days. Yeah. Um, if I can just uh, take a possession of the screen for a few seconds, mm -hmm. what I'd like to just backtrack and do is just show you the plan for the next uh, little bit, reminding the students if there's any questions, you can start putting them in the chat. We're going to have uh, Coach LeMay who will uh, read them a little bit later on. So it's called our fist, Flow in Sports, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we might change it uh, because other things are coming up, so we put them on any other days as well. It's a conversation with elite athletes and certainly pleased to have you around here. We've introduced already a video of you in the um, uh, that acceptance speech. So we heard it all leading up into this. So uh, we've seen some of your highlights playing for the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame as part of the GGs, working here at the Sir Wilfrid Laurier School Board, a championship season. And so these were some of the videos that, uh, you know, that we saw. Um, the agenda basically was the warm up, uh, the special guest yourself. And then what we do is a rapid fire. So we'll do that in a few minutes where we just ask you a couple of questions. And uh, mm -hmm. I know you're really good under pressure. So you only have a few seconds to, to answer some of these. So no problem. We're, we're looking at resilience. You know, that's the, the theme for tonight. What's your definition of resilience? Um, you know, it's, um, when I left, I left home, um, I left home, uh, for university and there's one thing that I always wanted to do. Okay. And, um, uh, and, and it's a, it's a brand, it's a brand, a brand, you know, you guys going to go ahead and, 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 and do this. Okay. I, I actually waited till I was 20 years old to do it. A brand is, um, you take, a uh, a, 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 a metal. You shape into whatever shape you want it to, and you put it in fire, it becomes red hot, and then you burn yourself with it. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy, it is. So on my arm, on my right arm, I have an S, okay? This S represents, of course, it represents Steve, okay? Um, this S represents Steve, Steve said Steve, but it really does represent never give up 
in life. I've been through some hard times in my life, whether it's my family, but it's me personally, people around me, um, really a hard time. And the one thing that I always said to myself, and even when I was your age, is that I will never give up. Whatever the situation is, whether you're losing by 40 points, whether coach tells you you're not, you know, you're not going to be playing this game or you will be benched this game or you're not working hard enough, you need to work harder or whatever it is, okay? I would never, never give up. If, if my, 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 my trick was whatever it is, whatever obstacle I would have in front of me, I will do whatever I could to overcome this obstacle. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, that, that, that's, that's what it is for me. Let's, let's try to now move from all the negativity, okay, all the hardships, and just give us the recipe. How do you bounce back? When, you're, you bounce faced, back? when you're faced with, you know, literally death, mm -hmm. uh, you have nothing. I mean, I, I've seen you contribute... Uh, in the Haitians, um, volunteerism, uh, you know, we're willing to offer you things and you just, you know, you don't want, you know, you don't want, uh, you don't want any uh, compensation. Say, hey, you know what? I, I just want to give. How, how do you have that mindset? Well, well, this mindset comes from my mother. Okay. My mother was a giver. My mother gave without asking anything back. Um, I, I believe in people. I believe in surrounding yourself with the right people. I believe that everyone that I come across has a role to play in my life. Whether it's a little role, a big role, whether it's, it's, it's to bring me success or try to bring me down, but I will always try to see the positive in everyone that comes you know, in my way whether they're involved in my life or not. So how would you, how do you motivate athletes, for example, during these COVID times? Um, it's right now to motivate athletes, be, 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 you know, because of all this yo-yo that's been going on, it's on and off and, and, and giving, giving a lot of students, student athletes hope that it's going to restart and then it's taken out. And it's, it's, it's being there for each other. So these Zooms that we have, we have them constantly, of course. Uh, we train with them online. Um, I've, of course, you know, we, we have study halls with our, with our athletes, so we see them there. Or we check up on them just, uh, you know, just, uh, just to see how they're doing. But we try to make sure that we stay in contact with them. That's, that's the, because, you know, we're, 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 in, we're in team sports. We're in team sports, whether it's, you know, in every team sport as as an individual effort that has to be done, of course, okay? But what, I, what we try to, to, to tell our athletes is that you're not alone, you're not alone. So this COVID that we're living now, yes, you're at home, you're at home with your family, probably in front of the, your computer or the TV, or hopefully you're doing your homework, of course, okay? But you are not alone. There's, there's, there are others living the same situ situation as you, right? So I believe that if we, if we gather and, and we stick together, so all the ones um, that are living the same situation and support each other, we'll get through this. You know, Fantastic. I think, I, I, I believe that people have to remind themselves that they have people around them. Okay, so I think we're ready for our rapid fire. I don't know if you're uh, good under pressure. Let's go, bring it. <laughs> So uh, very briefly, okay, mm -hmm. you got, uh, you know, under three seconds here, okay? So uh, push-ups or sit-ups? Push-ups. Most embarrassing moment as a player? Getting knocked down by Baron Simpson at the BC place, playing against the BC Lions. Three words to describe resilience. The worst. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think time's up. <laughs> time's up. Just never give up. Never give up. There you go. Three words. What about uh, biggest accomplishments? 
Um, well, be, be, you know, building a family, being a father. Who inspires you? Uh, that's tough. A lot of people inspire me. This, you know, this man, Mr. Ruji, inspired me so much that I, I apply a lot of what he did in my job today. So a lot of people inspire me. I, like I said, I fuel from people. People, you know, make who I am. I know you said uh, your mother inspired you. If we can yeah. go in the past, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's fantastic. Uh, without football, uh, what's the second sport you would have played? Handball. I, I played handball and football my whole life um, okay. until I, you know, got the CJEP and said, I'm just going to stick to the one sport. How do you build team culture? By making sure that whatever, whatever, um, making sure that the people in the program on the team are involved in this process into building this culture. I'm not going to dictate what the culture is. All right. I'm there, I'm there to guide them. They will dictate what type of culture we'll have on this team. Your most difficult part of your career? Um, losing my mother. Uh, and let's perhaps end off on a positive. Uh, last few things that you would like to say before we take questions and answers. Okay. Um, I grew up in, a, in an environment where if you had... If I, if, if I, when I was your age, I would, if I would have told someone one day, I'll become a professional football player and I'll be a teacher and I'll be a coach and I'll be in, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be an all framer. People would have said no, because of where I'm from, where I, where I grew up, because from where I grew up, you know, uh, not, not many were fortunate enough to, 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 to attain certain, certain goals. And like I said, because I had a good family, because I had good people around me, whether it's my, it's, it was my brother, sister, my aunts and uncles, everyone, um, people always believed, believed in us. And the, the main person was, of course, my mother who believed in us. And, uh, and uh, I, I owe it you know, to her today because of the values, the, the morals and values, every, the principles that, she, 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 uh, she, that we grew up with, you know, being around, around her. When you say uh, morals and values, can you just give me, uh, you know, one or two? Well, you know, um, you know, it's 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 no it's no secret. I grew up without a father, so I had to look at to see my mom who who struggled, you know, did her best to make sure we had a we had a a meal that we went to school that we had a lunch to go to school that we you know we 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 weren't lacking anything with my mother, of course. Um, so it was, it was to me, uh, the, the way I saw her work, her, eth her work ethic was, 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 was something, um, you know, at home, we're doing chores, we're doing chores at home. Everybody's, you know, helping everyone. Um, and it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, she would, she would teach us all these, these values, these morals, you know, uh, in terms of teamwork, which is what's family work in terms of hard work. Um, like doing a chore, so uh, having a work, having work ethic, and not complaining when you when you know when you're asked to do the dishes or when you're asked to vacuum, just just get it done. You know, of course it's not it's not the most fun thing, but we just we just got it we just got it done, and we had each other. We had to make sure we supported each other. I remember my brother, my little brother is uh, of course smart. You know, he was younger than me, and I would make sure that you know it was okay for him to, to clean up to, to to do to do all kinds of things. So, so I feel like, you know, whatever my mom taught us, I brought to my sports and whatever sports brought me, I bring to the person I am today. I bring to my Fantastic. kids. I bring to my Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the time that you've taken uh, with us. No problem. Uh, perhaps uh, Coach LeMay, if you can just grab a couple of questions. Then we'll end off uh, with uh, Mr. Ruji, who's got uh, a special announcement. For sure. Thanks for being there, uh, Steve Alexandre. It's great to hear you. Um, very good questions uh, this week. Uh, was there ever a time that you lost focus? And how did you overcome it? Did anybody try to put you out, out of that focus? Or and how did you overcome it? 
Okay. Um, when I was at University of Ottawa, but for my first, first game, I was a starter. Okay. I was a starter my first, first game. And then, um, and then I, 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 you know, I, I performed, I performed okay. You know, I was, I was, I was okay. I was not a bad football player, but, but I can't, I can't tell you I was, I wasn't good. Um, and at the time, after a few games, uh, my mom would come pick me up, uh, not pick me up. My mom would come see us, see us, see me play. And then one day she, I didn't see her in the stands. I didn't see my mom in the stands and I knew she was coming. And uh, it's halftime and, uh, and I try to go look at the, at the stands and she's not there. So uh, uh, I played the worst half of my football university of all career there because I was so worried. I lost focus because I didn't see my mom in the stands and she was supposed to be there. And then little you know, um, she, she did have a, a car accident coming up uh, to Ottawa. And then, and then, uh, and then she was okay. And then she was, she was okay. But uh, it was, it was, um, uh, at the, it was, it was tough. And I thought to myself, let me say, let me stay in Montreal a bit more uh, just to, to, to stay with her. And my focus was, was on my mother. And then she kept on saying, go back to Ottawa, go back. You have class, you have practice, go see your teammates. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fine. And it was because of her blessing that I, I stayed home the Monday to Tuesday and on Wednesday, I went back to Ottawa and I went good. And I remember we, we, we came back and we played, uh, we played McGill and let me say that I destroyed them. Okay. Very good. Now, knowing that, 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 that was completely out of your control, correct? So your mother's having an accident. How would you react now knowing that it, it would, you know, it was out of your control and would you have behaved or reacted a different way? Yeah, because today what I teach my, my, my kids, my students, and I've, I, told, I even told my, 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 my wife today, I tell, her, I tell her, you control what you can control. There are certain things happening that I'm sorry, but you, you, you can't do anything about it. You control. First thing you got to control is yourself. And you have to make sure that all these little factors, whether they're big or small, if your goal is to perform, it's your goal is to is to to contribute to your team. Um, is your goal, if your goal is to get better, then at that time you really have to focus. And and if you could, if, and think about controlling what you can control. Okay, there's certain situation that you can't, but the situation that you're in right now, okay, you can control it. You can. Sometimes it might seem hard, but trust me, if you Go back to your focus. You visualize everything. I'm telling you, it's it's going to work. And I've and I've learned that over the years. You know, I've learned that over the years. My other years playing football at University of Ottawa, I've learned that my years uh, playing as a professional athlete, and then I learned that my years as a coach. Okay, I learned that my years as a coach because understand something. As a coach, you're not on the field. You're not on the field. What all you do is you, well, of course, you guys have practices, right? And then you go, you go ahead and, uh, and, and, and make up your playbook, strategies and everything, and you send the players on the field, all right? Can I control them? Like I have, as if I was playing chess or checkers, I can't do that, all right? I can't control what is going on on the field when the, blow, when the, when the, when the ball is up, right? I can only control what I tell the players. So I control, I tried my best to control everything that I can control. And then hopefully everything goes well. But my players, I tell them the same thing. When we say um, um, to, to make sure, you know, to control what you can control is there's 12, there's 12, 12 aside on football, Canadian football. You have one 12 to do. You have to make sure that you remember your job. All right, control what you can control. Okay. And if That's all fantastic. 12 of you do this, then you should be, you'll be good. If you're playing hockey, and you're six on the ice, all right? You're six on the ice. You control what you can control. That's all it is. I think it's fantastic stuff. Really great uh, stuff here. I know there's a lot more questions, but uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. We can, uh, looks like we can keep you here all day. I can go all day, all night, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Um, 
perhaps uh, if you are willing to stick around for a few minutes and just to quickly let the class know I, in the chat, some administrative items, fill out the attendance form. We wanna know who's here. We also wanna know what you took away from it. So please uh, look at the chat, fill out the form. Perhaps uh, Coach LeMay, one more question. Take, uh, it's hard. I know there is a, a few other things there and perhaps what we can do is ask the student next time to literally uh, ask the questions. I think that might be uh, even more beneficial. Uh, so, Rob, one more question. In, in a nutshell, uh, the outcome, you became a professional. Mm -hmm. How much training did you do when you were 11, 12, 13 years old? Um, you know, times today are different. I feel like um, if I had the setup that you guys have today, all right, I, I probably would have had a a 15 year football career, a 15 year professional football career, because now we, we create these programs in order for you guys to, 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 to get the proper development. Okay. To get the proper, you, you don't need to go too fast. All right. You have to go according to your age, of course, and, and the people around you know exactly at what age, what you should be doing. Um, um, I was always someone, I remember when I started playing football, uh, of course I wanted to be fast. So we'd go to the park and just run, we would run. And you know, we, we'd run, run. And my, one of your first question, question was push-ups or, or sit-ups. And our thing was push-ups, do a lot of push-ups and run. That's what, that's what, that's what it was. Um, um, the, the training for our age, that your, your group of it, your, your group age, right? was not sophisticated, was not developed by as it is today. Um, we did not have um, people like Monsieur Lemay that are an expert uh, uh, to take care of us. We wouldn't have that. What you guys have is, is, is fantastic, okay? What you guys have is fantastic. And, and what I would say is whatever they tell you to do, you do, because they will know what's best for your de development. And of course, you guys can watch the NFL, you can watch the NHL, you can watch the, the, the uh, uh, English Premier League, whatever it is, but they went through a process in order to get there. You have to go through that process as well. And you have to make sure you do the right thing, make the right choices, of course. And one of the good choices is listening to your coaches and the people surrounding you in this program. Fantastic. Good stuff, Coach Steve. Good stuff. Okay, uh, we're going to end off with our special announcement. So I'm going to take the baton. Two Two seconds. People, someone asked me, Lawrence Taylor, my Lawrence Taylor is my idol. Play for the New York Giants. That's very, very, very important. The New York Giants are the best football team in the world. It's not of those Patriots or those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All this nonsense. Okay, the New York Giants. All right. I yes, agree. I'm, Can I just you. say that I'm my grandfather? So my grandfather uh, actually was a Patriots fan. He's been a Patriots fan for his entire life. My dad is one, and so am I. So, yeah, my you, uncle is a Patriots you, have, you have to agree with it. Well, you know what? Yeah. It's it's never too late to change. It's never too late, okay? The New York Giants. Oh, yeah, he's the greatest line, linebacker. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, he's the greatest. Linebacker. I, I Thank think you. you're going you're gonna to convert some people just uh, right off the bat. <laughs> but, New you York know, Giants, Lawrence you know, Taylor. A lot of people here just see, you know, a random question coming in and out, but I see much more th than all this here. I see Coach Steve looking at the chat because he does pay attention to detail. And I see Coach Steve volunteering more time out of him because it looks like it's an endless well in, in delivering, giving. And the funny thing about giving, I learned this uh, a little bit too late myself, I think. But the funny thing about giving is that the more you give, the more you're going to get. The more you give, the more you're going to get. It's, it's, and, it's funny. It's fu sorry. It's funny, funny you say this because I'm reading, um, is it Juliana Farah? Is that it? Um, asking, you know, about the, the, the most important value that my mom taught me. Well, it's, it, 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 it is giving. And it's giving without expecting to receive. You will receive at one point. One oh, yeah, but I gave, uh, you know, some effort. Oh, but I gave work. Oh, but I worked 10 hours. We were yeah. learning earlier what it takes to become an expert. 
uh, I imagine, you know, in your uh, pedag pedagogy, pe pedagogy mm -hmm. uh, you may know that number, how many hours it takes to become an expert. Would you uh, <laughs> venture to guess? How many hours? You can't count the hours to become an expert. So when you're Googling it, you know, they're saying it's 10,000 hours to become an expert. There you go. You know? there you the go. same thing over and over again. Okay, thank you again from the bottom of my heart, uh, Coach Steve. Wonderful, amazing. Coach Steve. Yes. Look what my dad gave me. Oh, wow. New York Giants pride. Thank you. NYG for life, baby. All right. Yes. So we're going we're gonna to pass the baton to uh, Mr. Ruji for the final words. All right. Well, uh, Lawrence Taylor wore 55, Coach Steve, correct? 56, 56. 56, okay. And you wore 55, so... I wore 55 because I said to myself, I could never be like Lawrence Taylor, so I'll wear 55. I'll just be... Well, I, you were pretty close, I'm sure, and, and, and that's why you're 55 and not 56. Uh, Coach Steve, I'm going to make you work a little bit more before um, I uh, give you the special announcement that we have no for problem. you tonight. Um, big question for you here, and, and this is, uh, I think, going to be very important for our, our students. Team player and team eight, team eight. Tell us the difference between a team player and a teammate. Team players, there's a lot of team players. Anybody can be a team, a, 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 a team player. I mean, um, uh, you know, when you, say, when you say team player, you say someone who would look out for the team, right? You wanna, you know, I mean, you wanna win. You wanna win, you wanna perform. Of course, you wanna get better, okay? Um, um, you, you know, may, mainly, I mean, I mean, of course we, we wanna win. Now, if you're a team player, you will make sure you do everything for this team to get better, for this team to win, hopefully win. If you're a team player, you will put the team before you, okay? You will put the team before you if you're a team player. You will do whatever it is that you can in your abilities to see what's best for the team. A teammate is not just a team player. Teammate is someone who to me will impact you right here, right now on the field or off the field and will still impact you later on in life. All right, that's, why, that's how I see a, uh, a teammate, someone that's willing to work with you in order to get, to get, uh, to get better. Boys and girls, uh, some excellent advice from Coach Steve about the difference between a team player and a teammate. I'm sure Coach Doron is going to be uh, following up on that in uh, the weeks to come. Uh, may I suggest, uh, Coach Doron, Coach LeMay, perhaps we can uh, send some of those questions uh, that are uh, unanswered from the chat. We can send those to Coach Steve by email, and then we can share the answers next week uh, with the group so that uh, everybody's answers, uh, everybody's questions can be answered. Um, all right, Coach Steve. Um, what we've done, uh, started doing here at Laval Junior Academy, upstairs in the community hall, is uh, we've, we've begun a series of banners celebrating success, celebrating the success stories of our school. And uh, those banners that we've started putting up in the community hall of the school, there's a banner for each success story. And uh, right now the success stories are former students, alumni who have gone on after a Laval Junior Academy. Some have become uh, lawyers, some have become dentists, some are, have uh, studied in the field of business and so on and so forth. A, a whole bunch of varied success stories uh, line the community hall upstairs. And we're in the process of putting up more and more banners as we reach out to the, uh, the alumni, the former students, uh, to, to celebrate their success stories, but at the same time to inspire our current students, 
the students that are in the room right now with us. The students who walk the halls and as they walk the halls, they look up and they see those banners and they take a couple of minutes to read those banners and see who was, uh, who was that student? What's that student's name? What did that student achieve? And the theme of those banners is, I can be. Each and every student that's in the room today and each and every student that's in our school can be something that they are dreaming about, okay? Now, the announcement tonight uh, that's uh, for you, Coach Steve, you have inspired us. You've inspired students in the past. You've inspired our students today. You continue to inspire uh, students in all of the work that you do. There's a new series of banners that we wanna put up in the school here. And that's a series of banners that represents the ambassadors for our school. Those who have um, had an experience with our school and that we look to as ambassadors, people who uh, will, will speak for the school, people who will represent uh, the values of our school in the larger community. You don't have to work here. You don't have to be um, a, a former employee or anything like that, but you understand uh, the values of our school, you understand what it takes for our students to be successful, and uh, you're prepared to be uh, an ambassador for our school, just like you've done here tonight. You've, uh, you've spoken on behalf of uh, your personal experience, and you've shared with us the keys to success. That is the role of an ambassador for our school. So my announcement tonight is that we'd like to make you one of our first ambassadors for the school. We'd like to create a banner for you with your name, your picture, your success story, so that people can look to you up on the wall and say, who was that ambassador and what does he represent? My question to you, Coach Steve, do you accept to be an ambassador for Laval Junior Academy? It'll be an honor. <laughs> sounds like a uh, sounds like a marriage proposal here. It's fantastic. Uh, I love this. I'll be honest with you. Um, and uh, I guess it's uh, tears of joy here. Uh, what are you feeling? What are you thinking, Coach Steve? See, when I said in the beginning that a lot of people inspire me, and I say that Mr. Ruji is someone who inspired me, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. When I left Laval Liberty, Mr. Ruji made sure that my passage was immortalized by naming a trophy after me. It's, it's 10 years now. It's 10 years now that we're not together. And 10 years later, He's still at it again. He's still doing it. Thank you. It's Thank worth you so noting. I mean, what things we see is the way that uh, Coach Steve touches his heart. You know, it's on the left hand side and, and appreciates. I think it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you're getting me to uh, tear up, so uh, we better stop here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ruji. Thank you so much, Coach Steve. Thanks, Coach LeMay. And most important, most important, thank you the students for listening. Thank you, Samos, for uh, being in the, in the background with the video on. You know, some of the things we talk about here, you're now taking it the moment you hang up this Zoom call, you're not doing it some of the time, these values, this resilience. You're not doing it most of the time, the values and the, the hard work ethic that we've learned tonight. You're doing it all the time. So thank you once again, everyone. We'll see you all around the school. We'll see you very soon in the school. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Coach Steve. Bye. Thank, thank you, Coach Steve. Thank you. Bye, Coach Steve. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks to you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Mr. LeMay, Mr. Doran, thank you. Mr. Ruji, always. Bye, Coach Steve. Thank you.
You know, I've always wanted to ask where Coach Steve, you and, uh, you know, Mr. Ruji came up with some of these plans here because there was always the, uh, you know, these packages that you had. It turned out to be the, I think, uh, I think they keep it left, eh? No, oh, he's there. He's still there. Well, the, you know, oh, the, 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 he's platinum, just not moving. He's the platinum there. package, remember that one? Who created the platinum package? That's what I want to know. The platinum package? When you were uh, solicitating money for sponsors. Uh, yes. Was that you or is that uh, Mr. Ruji? Uh, I believe that was Mr. Ruji. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the plans, you know, like the, 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 the complexity of it all, yeah. that playbook. I, 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 I mean, uh, listen, I will not state enough and I still tell my boss today, all right, I was fortunate enough to, to, um, to be around a principal like Mr. Ruji, who would really pay attention to details. But be before paying attention to details, it's always about putting the student first. It's, it's you know, this is, what, this is what it was. What can we do to make our students day better, to make our students semester better? To make our you know their 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 sports experience better, their their art experience better, you know, and I, I go to I go to my meetings at the at the at the CJEP, and it's right it's and it's like it, and that's what it is, especially now with COVID, it, it's all about what can we do to make sure that it focus. Let's do something special. Let's spend some money um, to have a, a a raffle, a draw, or something, uh, have some kind of uh, some kind of contest. Quelque chose pour les ramener. Toujours, toujours, toujours. This you, is, know, you, you, know. Should, you should hear uh, Mr. Ruji's announcements, man. I mean, uh, nine out of ten times, there's things that he's brewing up, and he's just always brewing up to something. I mean, you've left ten years ago. I'm embarrassed or happy to announce that I've, I've been with it all along. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lake of Two Mountains, Laval Liberty, Laval Junior, uh, left and right, and he's, you know, he, he's just constantly just you know moving and shaking and uh, you know fabricating and the schools always, you, know, you know the always, programs uh, you know you, you know what my my uh, my second child my second son's name is kaizen and kaizen is um is the model we had at the university of ottawa continuous improvement all right and that's how i see mr rudy always trying to get better we did this. Okay, this is this is okay. We did this. Now let's let's do more. Let's get better at this. That's how I see.